In this video, I want to cover some of my highlights from this month's Power BI's October 2022 feature update, including things like the quick measure suggestions, more tenant settings, and deployment history with pipelines. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start with this new update, which is the ability to reverse the stack orders in your legends. This essentially ensures that your legends order can match with the order that you have it in your stacked bar charts. With the October feature, you find this option under the colors section, and it will be available to visuals that stack, uh, such as the stacked column and bar charts, area charts, ribbon and combo charts. The next two updates are for the Power BI metrics, formerly called as goals. So as you know, you have scorecards in your metrics where you can create multiple metrics within it, which you can further break down into submetrics within their parent metrics. Now within the submetrics themselves, you can set individual target values. And currently there's no way to automatically roll up these values back up to the parent metric automatically. With this release, you can now roll up the currents and target values from your submetrics. You can choose an aggregation like sum, average, min, and max. This way, as the targets or your current values change within your submetrics, your parent metric will update its own values and take into account your changes, reducing the manual effort that may be involved when managing the metrics themselves. Another feature that the team has released is the new API to retrieve scorecards from the Power BI service. It will allow the admins to retrieve all scorecards within the organization, as well as the metadata for each metric within the scorecard. An API is simply just a programmatic way to interact with services like Power BI. And if you're not familiar with it and want to get started, I covered how to use Power BI's API uh, in a separate video. So check it out if you haven't yet. One of the coolest features that they released this month is the quick measure suggestions, which is an extension of an already existing feature, quick measures. Quick measures allow you to use a preset list of the most common calculations using drag and drop, which quick starts beginners in creating their own calculations. With quick measures, similar to smart narratives, you can ask questions in natural language and the machine learning algorithm will try to figure out what you want. It will write the DAX code for you and even generate other suggestions on measures, which makes it the perfect tool to help you get started with DAX. This feature is currently in preview, so if you want to use it, make sure that you toggle it under preview features in the settings menu and restart your Power BI desktop. To use it, you simply click quick measure, which will open up the suggestions tab and it will ask you to write in natural language uh, what you want to query the data sets and hit generate. If you find the DAX code you're looking for in the suggested list, you simply click add to add this measure into your model, which you can now use. It supports a good list of scenarios, which will be really interesting to play around with. So I'll most likely cover this in a separate video in the future. Just a quick note though, that the machine learning algorithm that this feature is using is stored in a US data center. So if you're based outside of the US like myself, you need to enable an additional setting as tenant admin to take advantage of this. It would be curious to see how it will affect me being based here in the UK. There's now an even quicker way to edit relationships in the model view. So when you select any relationships within your model, the properties pane will show the tables and the columns that uh, is being used and other features that you can edit like the cardinality, the cross filters, and maybe the active inactive options. This saves you time from having to double click relationships and getting the data preview, which can be a hassle if you're working with big data. 
However, it's still there should you need that window. Again, this is also a preview feature. So if you want to try it, you want to make sure that you enable this uh, relationship pane in the settings menu. You can now create and edit measures, so calculated columns and tables within the model view. For the longest time, it's always bothered me that somehow you weren't able to edit your measures or calculations in the model view, because it's the only view that allows you to multi-select columns to organize them into folders. So what I was doing is I was going back to the data view to edit my DAX codes, and then flipping back into the model view to organize them into folders. With this change, I won't have to do that. So it's a really neat quality of life change. Last May, the Power BI team announced DataMart, which is a more user-friendly way to set up an ETL solution which uh, reporting services like Power BI can use. They've now added the ability to manage DataMart for tenant admins. So you can disable or enable this feature, or you can choose a specific group that can create data marts if you want to. If you haven't noticed yet, when you download Power BI reports from the service, you now have two options. You can download the Power BI file with a copy of the data, which is how it was by default before. You can now also choose to download a copy of the reports with live connection to uh, the data in the Power BI service. I believe this option is added to allow users to download reports that normally wouldn't be able to because of how the report is configured. So an example with this would be reports that are using incremental refresh, whereas before it doesn't normally allow you to download the PBX file. With this version, it should. There's another option in the tenant settings, which will allow you to now send email subscription to external users. Subscriptions are useful to automatically send a static copy of your reports to your clients and sending them to external users makes it an even more of a robust capability. You can enable this across your tenants or to just the specific groups only. Just note that this feature is for reports hosted in premium capacity. Lastly, we talk about the deployment history within deployment pipelines, which is the ability to track deployment changes, which is a standard feature in a lot of uh, DevOps environments. Basically, as you deploy different versions in your pipeline, it keeps track of what changes you've made, by who, and even any notes which will help you diagnose and look for root cause if there are any failures in your pipeline. This is such a great feature and I wish they implemented it to Power BI reports published in the service. If you don't know anything about deploying pipelines and would like to know how it works, I did cover this in a previous video. So go check that one out if you haven't yet. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that is in the summary on the blog, only the ones that I found useful. So if you want to see the full lists of what's been updated in Power BI for October, I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.